Hey, what's going on guys? Lethal Flux here, and today I'm bringing you a deck profile of the deck that I took to regionals, which was Thunders, and it was very fun to play. I didn't do very well, um, not as good as last time, but that's okay. I actually didn't even look at my place because I bothered, or I, I just dropped uh, at X3. So I did enter in win a match, which was really fun. I got to the final round, and I lost to um, Hero Drain, which was unfortunate, but it was really fun still. I had a very awesome time in trades and meeting people and getting new subscribers, so yeah. Without any further ado, let's get into the deck profile. So to start off, you always want to run your three Thunder Seahorse, main searcher of the deck. Uh, never want to run it at less than three because oftentimes you use your Thunder Seahorse to get two more Thunder Seahorses so you can plus more next turn. You can only use it once per turn, and the turn you use it, you cannot special summon, which is why it works well with the Hunter engine, which is Triple Maw. Um, this card lets you normal summon another Thunder type monster except itself which is awesome and it is a normal summon so it works under thunder seahorse after that you run triple paw which is the same thing as maw hunter but um but it um has a hundred less attack <laughs> which is unfortunate because he's the man he should have more i'm just kidding i'm not sexist but yeah really good really awesome stuff because you normal summon this then you normal summon this overlay um, it's it's really fun, and uh, I didn't run this at the regionals, unfortunately, the Sis Hunter, but it ended up being really good because what happens is you use the Thunder Seahorse effect, and then you're gonna summon your Sis Hunter. You can even Thunder Seahorse to grab the Sis Hunters, and then summon uh, Sis Hunter. It, what it does is it banishes a, a Thunder type monster from the graveyard, and you get it back at the end phase. So if you if you go um, Thunder Seahorse for two Sis Hunter. And you use and you banish this with Sisundra's effect. You now have another Seahorse in the hand, and if this stays on the field, um, it's just overlay fodder for a level four or for a rank four, which is awesome. So that's it for the family, uh, the Thunder family, and their pet Seahorse. <laughs> Probably my favorite looking secret rare. Looks pretty nice. All first dead too. Uh, under the other monsters, you run a. Uh, Violent Prism at 2. I was running it at 3 at the regionals, which was very cloggy, and I did not like it. So I switched it up to 2. Um, tuner of the deck. Very big card of the deck, because when it's sent to the graveyard, um, when it's sent, <laughs> you equip it to uh, the monster that you synchroed for to have it become huge. So you have a 3500 attack Stardust Dragon, or 3800 attack Scrap Dragon, which is really nice, because those things are really hard to get over. And also for a Scrap Dragon, you can just use this as... Um, uh, the effect for Scrap Dragon. So you pop the Prism, just pop whatever you want, and you can proceed to attack directly or attack into a monster uh, without fearing back row. So yeah, two Prisms are really good. For the stable monsters, you run two Tragodia. Uh, really, really, really good card in this deck because what you do is you'll, you'll drop Tragodia on the damage. And the next turn, you'll use the effect to discard a level four to take one of their or to take one of their level fours, and target the level four and then overlay it. And um, there's a spell card that works very nicely with this card um, that I'll show you guys later on in the video. Uh, we run one effect veiler, which helps in the video or which helps in duels as well. I didn't run it because I ran two Phoenix chains, which was really not a good idea. I mean, Phoenix chain is an awesome trap card. It just it always seemed to get popped for some reason. It always seemed to get um, destroyed. So, yeah, Effect Veiler is a very nice choice for the main deck, I think. And you run a Gores. Um, Self-explanatory. I mean, it's Gores. <laughs> and one Honest, because everything is light, and this card changes games. This card is just way too good in this deck. Uh, for the spell lineup, two Recycling Batteries. A uh, very good card. Let's see, I had two Thunder-type monsters uh, with 1,500 or less attack from your graveyard to your hand. Too bad it's not 1,600, otherwise you can use your Thunder Seahorses, which would be broken. But yeah, so this card is what I was talking about, the Trag. So use Trag's effect to discard a level 4 monster, uh, and a level 4 Thunder monster, which is all you run. Take one of their monsters, activate your cycling batteries, and grab two. And since you haven't normal summoned yet, you normal summon them and just go off, which is a really good combo. Actually, I did it a few times, and every time I did that, I won my matches. So, yeah, really fun. After that, you run three MST. I was only running two at the regionals, which I also regret, but hey, that's okay. You know, you live and you learn. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, one pot of duality because you really want to dig into your deck. 
Um, opening Pot of Duality and Thunder Seal first turn is really awesome because they go well together and it uh, once again, you can't special summon, you need Pot of Duality, so you might as well Thunder Seahorse as well. Uh, you really want to dig into your deck and find the pieces you need to win the game. Really awesome card in this deck. Uh, one Pot of Avarice because everything seems to be in the graveyard a lot and it works nicely with the recycling patterns. Um, just a really good card because everything is often in the graveyard. Uh, and to finish the spells off, we run the Trinity. I mean, self explanatory. Really good. Good stuff. Uh, for the traps, uh, one of the MVPs, you run Triple Threatening Roar. This is to abuse your, your Thunder family's um, effects because they are once per turn, except for Sisunder. Sisunder is when she's summoned, but that's okay. So, if you use Seahorse, Normal Summon Maw, and then Normal Summon Paw, set this, say go, and they try to MST or something, they just wasted an MST because you can chain Threatening Roar, your Maw and Paw are safe, and you can use another Thunder Seahorse to use the effects of Ma and Pa to summon if you would if you would like to or you can just overlay and run over what they just uh, set so really nice at three I really love threatening roar in this deck abuse the hell out of those effects you're in two torrential self-explanatory double mirror force uh, one compulse didn't run this and I didn't run the torrentials which is ridiculously stupid because I love mass removal so yeah um, this has worked really well good as well against uh, uh, against Stardust, which I was up against multiple times. One bottomless trap wall. I just took one out for a Sis Hunter, which was a very good idea because that card is just way too good. And uh, the Solemn Duo, <laughs> because it is no longer the Brigade. I mean, self explanatory. Really good. So that was the main deck. Uh, I believe it came out to 40 or 41 cards. I'm not quite sure. Um, for the extra deck, I run two Stardust. It's level 8, really easy to make, because up to 35 with Prism, really good. Uh, one Scrap Dragon, like I said before. Uh, I didn't run this in the regionals, don't worry. Um, this is actually supposed to be an Avenging Knight Parshath. I have one that my friend has, and we're going to make a trade later. So I have the Avenging Knight Parshath, I just don't have it with me in this video. So run Avenging Knight Parshath, it's really good, it's 2600. With Prism, it's 3600, and it pierces, which is ridiculous. Um, it's amazing in this deck, Avenging Knight Parshath is the way to go. One Thought Ruler, um, very nice addition to the deck. This one's for D-Prison, <laughs> and Stardust is for Mirror Force. So this card's always good, because you're always going to pay 1,000, and you're always going to be getting at least 1,000 back from the monster you're attacking. And also, he's at 3,700 with Prism. I mean, it's way too good. I mean, it's, it's just awesome. Crimson Blader, one of my new favorite synchro monsters. This card is so good against Chaos Dragons. Mermails, the new E dragons that are coming out. It gets all the way up to 3,800 when it destroys a monster by battle. Um, they cannot special summon level 5 or higher monsters. This card is way too good, this format. I mean, it's really awesome. I know why they made it in Cosmo Blazer because it's needed. They just. This card's way too good. Uh, you should run it if you have, if you have uh, level 8 synchro options in your deck. Uh. One Violent Sigma, oh my god, so put in work against Mermails. I sucked up three monsters, and I just proceeded to destroy everything that they had, because they could not do anything about this. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I won the match against Mermails because of this card right here. Way too good. One Pappy, um, staple, it's Pappy, it's really good. One Shockmaster, probably going to take this out. I didn't make it that much, because I didn't really need to, uh, but yeah. Uh, one Utopia Ray, which was a Maestro, so run Maestro over Utopia Ray. Uh, Utopia, still good, run Utopia. New edition, okay. Thunder Spark Dragon. This card is so good when you're trying to push for game. Uh, it's it's really good. You never really get the second effect off because you don't run Spirit Converter. But this card is really, it, it's just amazing. It's like, it's like a Black Rose, but for all monsters on the field. And then it's 2400, so you can just boom hit it for game if they don't have anything to like answer it. This card's way too good. Uh, you want to run two Paladinamo and. That's what this Leviathan Dragon is in here for. I just recently put the other Paladino in my Constellar deck, which I will be doing a deck profile of as well. But yeah, don't run any rank 3s because it's just stupid. You don't run any rank 3s in Thunders, so don't think I'm actually running Leviathan Dragon. I'm actually running two Star Leech Paladino. This card's way too good. Good against Ophion. Good against everything, to be honest. Um, negates the effects, turns it to zero. You attack, basically doing 2,000. And also... Um, if you're in the process of synchroing, you can get Prism from the Grave to put on Paladin, which makes him 3,000. Um, when he gets destroyed by your opponent's card effect or battle, 
you draw a card. Um, even if they warning it, you still draw, which is amazing. And Abyss Dweller, oh my god, this card helped me win against Dark Worlds. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe they didn't pop it. <laughs> but it was just like, oh, Abyss Dweller, I win, um, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, Abyss Dweller is really good against Dark Worlds. Marmor is anything I use as the graveyard. So, yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, let me know if you guys want to see more deck profiles or more uh, dueling network duels or more live duels or what you guys would like to see because I'm definitely, um, I definitely have the time to do um, everything uh, for you guys. So, yeah. We'll be doing a deck profile of my Constellars when um, it's completely finished until, I mean, Omega and Sombres haven't come out yet, but when they do, that deck is going to be amazing. So, yeah. Uh, this has been Lethal Flux, bringing you a deck profile of my Thunder family. Like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Peace out.